Are you tired of all the competition to get your buyer's offers accepted? Well, I've got seven tips to make sure your buyer offers stand out from the rest. So stay tuned. Alex Camilio here, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with AgentInnerCircle.com, and today I'm covering the seven tips to make sure your buyer offers have the best possible chance of getting accepted. Before we dive in, though, I want to mention that all of the tricks in the book won't work if you haven't first set your client's expectations, and they say, want to offer below asking in a market like this. But we've covered setting expectations in the past, and you're more than welcome to check that out. But for today, I want to stick to getting realistic offers accepted. Right now, there's a ton of competition going on and you need to bring your A-game. And if you've been in real estate for any amount of time, you've probably used some of the tips we're going to cover today. What I want to point out, though, is that the tips and strategies you've saved for the most challenging circumstances in the past have become the new expectation if you want to get your buyer's offers accepted. So let's cover what the winning factors are. First up, you need to make sure your offer is complete clean and avoids asking for personal property. Okay. Complete might seem a little obvious, but in multi-offer situations, every detail matters. And if your offer isn't complete, it's going to the bottom of the pile, no matter what the offer price is. So take a little bit of extra time and ensure that you have everything in there that you need. The disclosures, the signatures, the dates, all of it. Once you've ensured it's complete, you want to make sure it's clean. And I'm not talking about avoiding coffee stains on a document. Many times, sellers will accept offers at a lower price point because they prefer the buyer's terms. So make sure that your offer is clean and avoids things like contingencies, financial constraints, or any seller concessions. Additionally, and for the same reasons, you want to avoid asking for any personal property unless the seller has offered it as part of the sale. The reality is, any additional terms and conditions make it way less likely that your offer gets accepted. So we've covered the basics, and I brought up how sellers often don't choose the highest offer because of various contingencies. But that doesn't mean money isn't important. As they say, money talks. Currently, across North America, an offer under asking price just isn't going to cut it. So you need to take a little bit of time with your clients to figure out the balance between what the home is going to sell for, what it's going to appraise for, and most importantly, what your clients can afford. However, offer price isn't the only tool in your belt when it comes to money. If possible, you can show how serious your buyers are by doing things like putting in a larger earnest money deposit, making a cash offer, or even offering a larger down payment to show how financially secure your clients are. Additionally, if you really think you're getting into a bidding war, you can add an escalation clause to your offer to make sure you don't get outbid. Keep in mind, though, this isn't for every situation. It's only for the ones where you think you might get outbid and you really want it. Plus, you're going to want to take some time to make sure you cover the boundaries of the escalation with your buyers before you submit that offer. That being said, I've talked to a ton of agents recently who have used these successfully, so it's definitely worth checking out. So we've covered the things you can do with your buyer, but I want to cover how you as an agent have a huge impact on whether an offer gets accepted or not. What do I mean? Well, your reputation precedes you, and I've heard story after story from sellers who will choose between two nearly identical deals based on the buyer's agent and whether they think that deal is going to be seamless and drama free. That's why most agents will recommend calling with the offer even if you've submitted it by other means. It makes sure that nothing falls through the cracks, plus you get an opportunity to build a rapport with the agent on the other side, because you never know when that deal is going to come down to you and your reputation. We've gone over some of the best strategies for getting your buyer's offer accepted, but I have one more that makes an enormous difference through the entire process stay positive. 
I know, it can be totally discouraging when you lose out on offer after offer, but your clients need you to be the one that stays positive. If you lose optimism, it's incredibly easy for your buyers to sense that, and the last thing you want is any sort of negativity going into the next offer. That's why you need to have a plan in place for how you're going to approach your buyers if you happen to lose out on that last offer and where to go from there. So do your best to stay optimistic and have a plan in place because I promise it'll set you up for success. What'd you think? Was that helpful? If so, or even if you just want to help us out, I would greatly appreciate if you hit the like and subscribe button down below and left us a comment letting us know what you think. That being said, my name is Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. And as always, best wishes for your success.